you are going to learn a very famous application of um, Markov process, let's say Markov chain. Um, it is called gambler's room problem. And uh, we have a gambler. Um, and we'll, this gambler is playing a certain gambling game. And what happens is uh, we have probability P. Um, he'll win one unit uh, of money. Um, apparently, um, he'll have probability Q, which is one minus P, to lose one unit of money. All right. And uh, what our goal is to figure out certain long-term probability. That is, uh, suppose we currently start with capital I. We want to find the probability of uh, the gambler's fortune hits it. Given initially, uh, we have um, I unit of money. And this is like uh, we make the bank go broke. Or ourselves go broke. That is, uh, the scambler's fortune hits zero, uh, given we start with uh, I unit of capital initially. Where this uh, x sub n is uh, the scambler's fortune at uh, time n, little n. Apparently this is a, a markup chain. Uh, and we have state 0 to capital N, state space. Zero, one, two, till capital N. And zero if um, our fortune hits zero, we stop playing. Um, and the same thing applies to capital N, which means from state zero to state zero, and next step is one. It means once we hit stay zero, uh, we stay there forever. We don't play the game anymore. And the same thing happens uh, to the state of capital M, all right? And for intermediate state, so consider an I, that is from one, two, three, till and minus one. Um, this is a, uh, let me add a remark. So we have I unit of money uh, at step n, right? And we have I plus one, uh, that many money at uh, n plus 1. This means from this step to this step, uh, we win uh, 1 unit of money. And what uh, uh, this means is because we have probability p to win 1 unit, so this is nothing but p. And very similarly, um, We can compute from i to i minus y is nothing but q, which is 1 minus p.
A little remark here is uh, you guys might find this kind of very familiar, um, except the two uh, like ending state on the two ends. The intermediate states are very similar to a random walk. That is, we have probability p to go up by one step, and we have probability q to go down uh, by one step. And this is actually called a random walk with two absorbing barriers. And later on, we'll learn uh, some other type of barriers, like uh, reflecting barriers. Um, but right now, uh, let's go back to this uh, gambler's room problem. And we have uh, um, classes. Apparently, we have uh, three classes. All right. Zero, and N, and all the other uh, Intermediate states. Um, for these two states, for zero and n, once we hit these two states, we stay stay there forever. Uh, that's why they are recurrent. Uh, once we've hit uh, zero, so we'll stay there forever, which means that uh, we'll visit it infinitely many times. If we look at um, these n minus one many uh, states, it's less obvious, but they are transient states, which means within expected finite many uh, steps will either go broke or the bank will go broke. And we will see in a moment why this is the case. And now let's denote uh, the following thing, that is uh, a capital P sub i, which means uh, we are currently at these uh, transient, state, uh, transient states, which means our current fortune uh, is i. And uh, we're interested in this probability, that is our fortune, um, which is xk equals n for some k uh, that's uh, greater than 0, given uh, x0 is i. All right, and we can uh, we can short. Let's say uh, this is a fortune hits n. And very simple is we can condition this probability on the first game we played. And we use uh, this formula. So uh, I'll write this formula aside. That is a uh, um, probability of uh, A given B is probability of um, A intersect with E given B plus probability of a intersect with E complement given B, and this is further um, by the conditional probabilities formula. This is nothing but A conditional E and B times E given B plus A condition on E complement and B times E complement given B. All right. And we same thing, we condition on 
x sub 1. So we'll use uh, uh, this formula to compute this probability and uh, it is x where our fortune will eventually hit n given x1 is and keep this in mind x1 can only be i minus 1 or i plus 1 uh, we have x i plus 1 x0 is i times probability of x1 equals i plus 1 and x0 is i and plus we condition on x1 and x1 has two possible outcomes this is x hits n given x1 here we have uh, i plus 1 then x1 here is i minus 1 and uh, x0 is i times x1 is i minus 1 given x0 is i so far we're using uh, the conditional probability uh, formula um, so let me add this little remark here um, this event is a in this formula and uh, this can be viewed as the e complement and this is b next step is we use the markovian property of this process we have this is nothing but our fortune eventually reaches n given right here we have a condition on both x1 and x0 but uh, uh, because of the Markovian property we have this is only x1 um, is i plus 1 and then we multiply with this transition probability from i to i plus 1 plus we copy down this probability as well and we use the Markovian property this becomes the condition is only on x1 is i minus 1 multiply with x1 is i minus 1 condition on x0 is i and now we have to take a leap of faith all right um, because of the memoryless property of uh, the markup chain if we look at these two probability and because we are interested in computing what is called pi which is our fortune reaches n when we start um, with i unit of a capital of money and let's look at this probability this is x1 is i plus 1 is because of markup chain is memoryless it is as if we can start on x1 and with i plus 1 that many uh, unit of a capital what's happening is uh, let me use a double wavy underline here the single wavy underline term is nothing but capital P sub uh, I plus one all right this is this is by definition of a P sub I which is we start at I plus one unit of fortune or money eventually uh, we will hit M. this one is the transition probability which is uh, from i to i plus 1 um, this is essentially uh, we win one unit of money at uh, uh, the first let's say uh, gamble round and let me use double on the line here and similarly what we have is 
This one is uh, uh, 1 minus p, which is q, and the double will be on the line part. Very similarly, this is uh, p sub i minus 1 times q. All right. Now let's recap what we have derived is p sub i equals p sub i plus 1 times little p plus p sub i minus 1 times q. And moreover, we know that p plus q is 1 because it's a probability we have p chance of uh, going up and uh, uh, q, that many chance of going down. What happens is we can then rewrite the left side of this equation as uh, p times capital P sub i plus q times capital P sub i We can then rearrange the terms so that uh, it becomes a geometric series. How do we do that is we combine all the p terms. How do we do that? For example, uh, we subtract this term to the right uh, and we subtract this term to the left. So what happens is uh, q times p sub i subtract p sub i minus 1 equals uh, p little p times capital uh, p sub i minus 1 subtract capital p sub i. All right. And we're almost there. This becomes p sub i plus 1 subtract p sub i is equal to uh, q over p times p sub i subtract uh, p sub i minus 1. Now what we want to do is we treat not p sub i, but rather this difference between uh, these uh, probability as the terms. So what we can do is we treat this one as a sub n and we treat this one as a sub n minus. Using a very straightforward uh, reasoning we can see that um, a sub n which n uh, starts from uh, 0, 1, 2, blah, 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 until um, capital M minus 1, because we stopped at uh, uh, P sub uh, N, um, is a geometric series. But it's only a part of the geometric series because uh, um, this we have a finite many terms. And what we can see is uh, uh, we can directly use the geometric series sum um, to derive um, the formula we would like to use. But uh, here I just want to keep consistent with the textbook. The textbook use a very clever way to derive it. Uh, first, we need to observe that um, p sub 0 is 0 and uh, uh, p sub capital N is 1. Um, because uh, if our fortune, if our fortune uh, is zero, we stop playing the game because we don't have any ca capital. Um, 
we have zero chance of reaching M because we, we stopped playing the game. And for this one, is we already uh, reached M. And this means uh, we stopped the uh, play the game as well because we our fortune already uh, reaches M. As a result, um, if we write down the terms explicitly for this geometric series, we have P2 subtract P1 is Q divided by P uh, times P1 subtract P0. But keep in mind, P0 is 0. This becomes Q divided by P times P1. And now we move on. We have P3 subtract P2. Uh, this is Q divided by P times P2 subtract P1. But now we use the relation of the first equation. Uh, we'll have, we have one more factor of uh, uh, Q divided by P. And similarly, what happens is uh, dot 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 for any in general terms i. This becomes um, q divided by p, and this is a p sub i minus 1, subtract uh, p sub i minus 2. And we proceed until we reach uh, the first term. And very easily, we can see uh, the index is, so if we have a 2 right here, it essentially follows uh, uh, this index, which is uh, the smaller one in the difference of the left side. And this becomes Q divided by P to the I minus 1 power times P1. Now, if we sum up all the left sides, what happens is we can see if we sum up the left side, it's like a, a telescoping series. Uh, this uh, plus P2 will cancel with this minus P2, and similarly, plus P3 will cancel with the next terms minus. Uh, P3, and what we'll obtain is going to be uh, P sub i subtract P sub 1 is the summation of uh, a geometric series, but only partial sum of a geometric series. And because we have a common factor P1, we pull it out. And now we uh, move uh, this term to the right, and we'll get this is P sub i is because this is nothing but P1. It is as if we add one inside this term. And we can set our index starting from 0, because when j is 0, uh, this term is 1. And now we reach our formula. Um, this is a partial sum of a geometric series. Let me write... Uh, a remark here. We use a formula um, we'll have this is nothing but one minus Q divided by P raised to the ith power divided by one minus Q divided by P, all right? And here's a caveat. In order that this formula works, 
the ratio of consecutive terms in this geometric series cannot be one. All right. Otherwise, uh, this quotient uh, is is not valid. Equivalent of saying p is not uh, one half, because if p is one half, uh, one minus p is q, which is one half, and this is the same thing as saying p is not q. And when p is q, which is p is half. And apparently, we, we, we simply uh, add up this j from 0 to i minus 1, uh, which totally, uh, there are i terms. And they are all the same, which is uh, p1. Now we let. Um, our i to be capital N, which is uh, the desired capital we would like to reach. And let's recall that uh, probability of if we have fortune N, we'll reach fortune N is 1. All right. And this equals 1 minus Q divided by P uh, raised to the nth power divided by 1 minus q divided by p. And this is uh, p is not uh, 1 half. And if p is 1 half, this is n times p sub of 1, if p is 1 half. Now let's look at uh, um, what happens here. Oh, I think I forgot to multiply a P1 here and a P1 here. What happens is we ignore this intermediate P sub capital N. We can solve for P1 from this equation. If we solve it, uh, we obtain p sub 1 is nothing but uh, we divide this term to the left we'll have this is uh, 1 minus q over p divided by q over p raised to the nth power if uh, the probability of winning is not one half and uh, we divide this n to the left we have this is a uh, 1 over n if uh, p is half. If we recall the formula of, uh, of pi in terms of p1, which is uh, right here, all right? Now if we plug in the p1 in this formula, what happens is we'll get pi. And pi will be p sub i is uh, nothing but 1 minus q over p raised to the i power divided by q over p raised to the nth power. If uh, p is not uh, one half, and it is one half. It is simply i times uh, one over n, which is i divided by n. If uh, this p is one half, and now what happens is uh, we would like to check the probability when we let n goes to infinity. This is like uh, we, as if we have uh, a dealer uh, with infinite wealth. All right, and let's check this probability. What's the limit of uh, this probability? 
Um, first, let's check the probability when uh, this p is uh, greater than one half. This is uh, we have more chance of winning than uh, losing. Q divided by p is strictly less than one. And if we look at uh, this term right here, when we let capital N go to infinity, uh, this term will become zero, and what's left is only the top term. So it is one minus Q divided by p raised to the ith power. Keep this in mind. I is a is a fixed number now, and we don't let i go to infinity. We just let the capital N go to infinity. And the other case is uh, when p is uh, less than or equal to half. When p is half, let's consider this case. Because i is a fixed number, when we let n go to infinity, uh, it's zero. And when p is less than half, So we have two cases, which is p equals half. When p equals half, uh, this is the uh, limit of uh, of this term is zero. When p is less than half, this means we have more chance of losing than winning, and which means uh, this is uh, greater than one. If Q uh, divided by P is greater than one. What happens is on top right here, uh, because I is fixed, we have a finite uh, number. But in the denominator, uh, because we let N go to infinity, uh, this goes to infinity. This is a finite number over infinity, so it's zero. As we can see, when p is less than or equal to one half, and the chance is zero. All right. And what does uh, uh, this math tell us? What's the story behind it? It tells us even we're playing a fair game. It means our chance of winning is one half. Um, or we're playing an unfair game, which means the dealer has uh, an advantage over us. Uh, when p is uh, um, less than one half, and we know the pi essentially goes to zero, uh, this means. Uh, with uh, probability one. And this means uh, the gambler will go broke against dealer. All right. And when P is uh, Greater than half, it means we have more chance of winning than losing. And keep this in mind, uh, this is not a probability one. We only have, all right, and pi goes to a uh, and this number is uh, between the gambler has a positive probability uh, to reach n. And actually, the, the, this implies uh, our fortune uh, will increase indefinitely. with a positive prob probability.